Oh, welcome back, man, you know? Okay, what key are you guys in? E, okay. Well, guys, you know, yeah, welcome back to the show, all that kind of bull crap. You know, who cares? C whatever. Because, guys, on the show, we usually talk about big ideas. You know, we really focus on the macro, me and cheese, and sort of big ideas like... Generally speaking, Chinese people look Chinese. Okay. You know, and sometimes we do look around and we look on social media and we say, I do hope there is a nuclear apocalypse. But sometimes we want to look at what's going on in the real day-to-day -day life, life, lives of people, you know, like me and you. And so to do this, I go on a academic research website called Reddit, Reddit, subreddit. They're called subreddits, right? I do wish that this subreddit existed when I was younger because I would be on it all the time asking these kind of questions. That's right. What is it called? The social skills. The social skills subreddit. I love this. I mean, this, some of these questions are just adorable. You know, some of these people are in the pobrecito zone, pobrecita zone. It's just people, they want to know, how do I make this life of mine work out? Does everyone hate me? Why does everyone hate me? These are the kind of things they ask. Okay, here's the first one. What is the correct response to what's up? Something I've been wondering, but I've been too afraid to ask. What's up? What's the correct response to what's up? For you, for this person, it's all the money in that person's bank account. That's for this. For a for a question that innocent, for a question that innocent, you deserve you deserve that. This is one of those questions that it's so basic that it's kind of hard to answer. Like somebody was telling me that their kid asked them, "Where do old people come from?" Where do old people come from? That should be an easy one, but it's like, uh, oh, shit. um, how old are you? Four. Um. You know, let's give this person a real answer to this question, okay? And that is, if someone says what's up to you, just assume the worst, okay? If someone says what's up, they're trying to start some f***ing shit. They're trying to start some real bull with a mother right now. So immediately go on the offensive to cut their ass off. This is great. I talk a lot about Finland on this channel, and there's a guy from Finland in the comments of this question. Hi! I'm Finnish. What's up or how are you are very serious questions in Nordic countries cultures and are meant to be a spark for conversation usually history is shared between the people who ask the question blah 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 in fact in finland there is no small talk culture and generally and generally and generally speaking if people don't have something deep and important to share they can spend time in silence you know i kind of believe that in finland that there's no small talk culture because small talk is bullshitting that's what it is it's bullshitting it's lying you know, and America is a lying, bullshitting culture, you know. You know, everybody's a temporarily embarrassed millionaire and all this crap. It's trickery. It's con artistry. It's black magic. It's Satanism. It's funhouse mirrors, carnival games. But in Finland, you know, you run into a guy. He's like, hey, what's up? Hey, man, what's up? And the other guy's like, I have nothing important to say now about that in response to that. So I will be stare here in silence for two minutes. Then I will go eat some smoked fish in the freezing cold. Goodbye. Goodbye. Yeah, but to that person, when somebody says what's up, it is a threat. It is sort of a, you know, it's like being in jail. That person is testing you to see how, you know, so you have to respond as quickly and as violently, uh, you know. Okay, here's a really good one. I have no clue what to say or add to the person's sentence. A lot of them are very basic like this, which I find uh, very uh, charming in a, in a way. A lot of times, the things they say are difficult to add to. So what do I do in this scenario? Two, how do I change the subject? I love this one. How do I change the subject when I'm not interested in what they're saying? Let's assume they are talking about their wife or something. <laughs> I love that this person just assumes somebody talking about their wife is boring. Yeah, me and my wife. Boring. I get what he's saying with people going on about their wife. You know, it's so boring. My dad does that a lot, you know. You know, I just want to tell him, like, she ain't all that. I don't want to make too much fun because I bet a lot of people on the social skills board might have some. They might have challenges with, you know, social skills and all that. 99% of people having a hard time with conversations or talking to people can be solved with, don't just don't worry about the details too much. Don't worry about the details. Having a conversation is supposed to be like a fun little game. That's it, all right? Even when you're in a relationship, a lot of the conversation's fun game. There will be some where you're like, no, you a 
asshole, you piece of shit. Where were you? <laughs> <laughs> okay, here's a really good one. The day isn't complete without one awkward... <laughs> the day isn't complete without one awkward conversation. The day isn't complete without... <laughs> Anyone else feel like their contributions to a conversation are awkward or weird? Awkward or... Weird. Or when you step away from a conversation, you just feel like it was awkward, like the dialogue you used was weird. This was definitely me most of my life. I did this thing once, 20 years ago, okay? I was I was hanging out with these people who I kind of, I thought they were cool. I kind of thought they were cool. I sort of wanted to impress them. And I was talking to this woman and she said, oh yeah, me and my family were from Massachusetts. And for no reason, no reason whatsoever, I said, oh, me too. <laughs> me, t me too, me and my family too. I was saying, total lie, total lie for absolutely no reason. And this woman did this absolutely demented and insane thing where she said, oh, what part? And I said, oh, we're not, we're not actually. And she very gracefully uh, stopped talking to me. And I have thought about that conversation uh, for the past 20 years. And if that woman is watching this video right now, which she probably is, I am from Massachusetts, actually. I am from Massachusetts. But the good thing is, and to this person, they're probably in their 20s or something, this kind of dies out, this sort of nervous energy where you're awkward and you say stupid. After a while, it just kind of goes away because you're just too, you just don't have the energy to care anymore because you're dying. Because you're dying and you're going to die and you don't care. You say to yourself, oh, people uh, not liking me or thinking I'm weird is actually not that big a deal when I compare it to the fact of, of that I'm gonna die. Oh, hell yeah. Disgusting. Here we go. That's in the Bible. This is, this is one of my favorite questions. How to be cool. How to be cool, question mark. So I was hanging out with a friend of mine around campus and people he knew would literally just come up and high five him. Wow. Wow. Cool. People would just literally come up and make pee pee on him, would just come up and high five him. And I don't know, people just seem comfortable around him. I feel like if it were me, there'd be much more awkwardness during interactions. Anyone else feel the same? Yeah, so this kid actually attached a video of his friend. So let's play that video now. <laughs> Generally speaking, Chinese people look Chinese. Yeah, I wish I could contact this person because there's a good chance that those people were actors who he paid beforehand. Those are crisis actors, I call them. This has been a question uh, in time in memoriam. Memorial, whatever it is, whatever, who cares? This has been a question throughout time of how do I be cool? There's someone cooler than me. How do I outshine their ass is what you think. And there's been many films that have asked this question. There's one, it's called The Teen Wolf. And what Michael J. Fox did in that movie was he, I, I don't really remember, he became a wolf or something to be cool. He became a wolf and then he could dunk a basketball. So you could try that, you know, to be cool. Michael J. Fox, the original furry. You know, let's see what YouTube has to say about this. How to be cool. What's up, YouTube? Hi. Jeff the Style OG. Okay. In today's video, I'm gonna give you 10 tips on how to be cool. Oh, okay. If you're new to the channel. This guy does seem cool, actually. Yeah, I mean, what are the tips? Cough up the tips, please. Now, some guys seem to be born with just a natural innate ability to be cool. Yeah, like the high five guy from Reddit. Yep, okay. Now, first tip on how to be cool is don't try to be. Yeah, I know that may sound a little counter- Ooh, woo! I like this already. It's the notes you don't play. Miles Davis said that, and guess what? He was cool. Coincidence? <laughs> yeah, right. You know what? There is a guy who I think is cool who can maybe help us. How to be cool, Ben Shapiro. Okay, here's another social question. How do I get my riz up? How do I get my riz up? If you're not on TikTok and you don't know what riz is, uh, it's charisma. How do I get my charisma up? I always see dudes go up to girls, whether it's at work, the gym, etc., and just shoot their shot, no cap. Doesn't matter if they're ugly, fat, skinny, short, tall, etc. I always witness this. I always witness it and want to be able to do it. To do that. Okay, guys, if you'll excuse me for a second. How do I get my riz up? My riz is my riz is all fed up. My riz is all fed up. Okay, so this is Tick Tink, and this is called Unspoken Riz on the Teacher. Unspoken 
This is called unspoken Riz. So watch and learn, assholes. Hell yeah, okay. Fortunate to know you, babe. Okay, right there. You see, this is what the kids call unspoken riz, right here. That, right that. So I want to introduce into the youth culture flute riz. You see somebody you like? What up, guys? It's your boy, Hi. Evil Code Red, back again. Another banger video. And today, Whoa. I'm showing you hey. guys how to use unspoken riz. Unspoken riz. You just go, and boom, they come your way. Now I'm gonna show you, you guys go like how this. to do this. <laughs> okay, here we go. This is kind of an intense one from a young person, but uh, I thought this was interesting. I feel like I don't even think anymore. I'm a 20 year old female and I've recently noticed that I have nothing to say, like ever. Um, I already solved this, uh, move to Finland. You know, you could just be like, we're going to eat fish. It doesn't really bother me until people bring it up. I feel like it's affecting my relationships and my friendships, but I'm genuinely not thinking of anything. I used to talk all the time and would have so many deep thoughts. And now it's like I've been reduced to thinking I'm hungry and other basic body functions. Has this happened to anyone else? This is a really young person, 20. So it's sort of like, yeah, you're 20, you know. But there's a lot of older people in here agreeing with this person. This is also one of the most popular posts. Eight days ago, 1.3K upvotes. I'm interested what you guys watching this think about this, but I think there's two things here. There's like a bigger political answer here, which is, you know, one of my main driving political ideas is that people should have more free time. We should, as a society, be working toward giving people more free time. That's like a major thing. And if people had more free time, they would have more time to pursue interests. They would have more time to be social. But, uh, there's a lot of questions like this where it's like, how do I keep doing a conversation? I don't know how to do a conversation. I don't know what to say after someone says something to me. Da, da, da. This question comes up over and over again. And then this one is like a more intense version of that. I think part of it, this might be a, a little bit more of an immediate answer, is I think that it's creative. Like a, any conversation, you know, having conversations and even like what this girl is saying, like just having thoughts, thinking about things is it's like a creative thing with a conversation. You're creating a dialogue. You're creating a moment or whatever. And definitely having time to work those creative muscles is going to help. Yeah, somebody kind of answers this. Work has taken the time that hobbies used to occupy, all to the point where when I'm not working, I don't want to do anything except just rest. This is for a lot of people. They're like, man, you know, I, I've had this conversation so many times with people at jobs like, Oh man, I'm going to do this thing. I'm going to do this thing with the piano or something. Oh, I'm going to do this thing with a camera, you know, whatever. But, you know, when I, I say I'm going to do it and then the weekend and I don't do it. This is like a dilemma that every person has. You know, I've had this dilemma for pretty much my whole life. Yeah, so I guess like at the micro level, it takes a lot of discipline if you have a full-time job to do anything else really. But uh, But at a macro level, we should be lowering the work week. Free time should be a big goal of society, but of course, in America, in a lot of other countries, you know, there's more free time in America. Not so much, not so great. But, you know, according to Ben Shapiro and all the other guys, America number one. Okay, great, amazing, wow. So we've learned a lot about riz razzing, all this other crap, but uh, I wanted to end this on a sort of a nice one here. Here it is. How I learned to form genuine connections with people. I was a bit of a weird kid growing up, and as a consequence of that, I was on my own a lot. I didn't mind much. I was quite happy playing on my own. But but as I grew older and I became less weird and more social and I became less That's really weird. God damn you. And I became less weird and more social. I could never quite connect with people on the level that I'd had like to. So long story short, this guy is like, eh, I gotta figure out how to stop being weird and how to connect with people. And he comes to a really smart, for a young person, I think this person's in college, he comes to a really smart conclusion, which is, the answer I landed on was that a lack of empathy comes from a lack of similarity. We are typically crueler to the things that we are less similar to ourselves and nicer to those which we have uh, similarities. Weird. 
Now, this was my own simple interpretation of a very complex question, blah, 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 blah. So basically what he did is he's like, I'm going to start looking for similarities in myself to other people. What I found is that by quickly identifying these similarities between me and the other person is that I became more inviting and relaxed about the idea of friendship. Wow. Yeah, good for you. Wow. What I found out is what I found is that generally speaking, okay, stop. Chinese Joe, people look Chinese. It's not the time. Uh, when I found similarities, I found that it's easy to make friends with people. It instantly took away any kind of antipathy I may have subconsciously had toward the person. It has made me receptive to good vibes and better at radiating uh, them straight back. Wow. Wow. Well, good for this guy. I think that's a pretty good. I think this guy found a pretty good way to do it. I could literally say anti-Semitic okay, shit. Don't do that. Don't do that, though. Well, I guess it is something you guys both agree on, so... Okay, one last one in this looking at my favorite subreddit, Social Skills. This is a really charming one, just like the kid who wanted to know what what to do when people say what's up. Uh, this is another one that's kind of like that. Why is nobody interested in being my friend, but nobody can tell me what's, quote, wrong with me? Oh, this... Not to make fun. This is not... I want to be very clear. This is not making fun. I love this person. I'm not making fun, but I like this. Everyone I can ask, i.e. especially family, but I also at least have a girlfriend, tells me that there is nothing wrong with me. I am not saying this to brag, but to explain my problem. I am described as intelligent, open-minded, friendly, inter interested, interesting, funny, etc. Okay, so long story short, who's trying to figure out why they can't make friends with people. But I found it kind of charming that this person was just like, I don't have any friends. What, hey, what's wrong with me? Hey, family, what's wrong? Can you please explain what's wrong with me? Because I can't. I mean, he's right. Because you can't really see what you're doing. You know, hey, what's wrong with me? If you really want to know what's wrong with you. Call a crackhead. Why? So to that person on Reddit, nothing's wrong with you. You seem very nice. And I hope you make some friends. You do have a girlfriend. You were showing off about that. But uh, anyway, guys, there it is. I think we learned some things. And I think we had a great time looking at my favorite subreddit. It's called, I saw that on Facebook. And one final note. I am having trouble doing a show. <laughs> Great. Well, guys, it's the middle of the week, which is kind of garbage. It's bullshit, but we're pulling through and we're doing this. I am calling bluff. Right. And? And it makes me cry. Well, guys, thank you for watching this video. If you're confused about where it is. That's on YouTube. Love you. And bye-bye. Oh, hey, guys. Guess what? You're not even getting the whole show. If you want every episode and a whole bunch of other sh Subscribe on Patreon. Subscribe on Patreon for as little as two bones. Just click the stupid little link below the video in the comments. See, right there. There you go. Click it and that, yep. <laughs> when you become a patron for as little as two bones, you get the Tuesday, Thursday, patron-only episodes. Ah! You also get the weekly book oblega show where we talk about important books. The questions and comments th th thing where you can ask questions and make comments and all this crap. And the weekly behind-the-scenes show. All for less than the price of a rancid Charleston chew. And for only 25 putrid little dollars, you could become a producer. That's right, support the show and get your name up here. Look at these people. Look at these... These people, it make the show possible, okay? God. I mean, without these beautiful people, this show goes straight into the dumpster. A rotten, you know, just wet, disgusting dumpster, you know, behind a restaurant. So it's there's old milk in there. That's where this show ends up without these people. Is that what you want? Okay, I guess it's what, okay. No, I guess it's what you want. I'll just leave. No, 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 it's done. It's too late. Okay? Okay? Here we go. Here's the dump truck. Here's the dump truck. Come to pick up the show. This is what would happen with no producers. Thank you.